So one of the things that I like about NIMBY rails is that you can supposedly follow a passenger from their origin to their destination and they will use multiple forms of transit. They will use a, a multi, make an actual multimodal trip. Now I've carefully determined that there is a, there, there are several passengers at Kansas City Union Station on this fine Tuesday morning uh, waiting to go to destinations in St. Louis CIC Commons, which is a Metrolink stop in uh, uh, kind of in Midtown, and uh, a bus stop that the game has named Flamingo Bowl. It's the automatic name. I didn't really pick it. I could change it if I wanted to, but it's not that big a deal, and there's so stinking many bus stops that I didn't really bother. Anyway, we got a pretty good idea that they're going to be taking an awful lot of train, and they'll be making some changes. I could follow either one of those. I think I'm going to follow the CIC Commons person because that's a slightly more interesting trip. But they will probably get on the uh, the uh, the commuter, the, the, the local along the Sedalia line, the Missouri Pacific local. So let's follow them. Because it's kind of fun to watch the trains. Let's 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 put on some speed. And do this here. We'll put it on. Uh, we're not going to go on the slowest speed. We'll go on the middle speed because otherwise this will take forever. But if we go on the fastest speed, it'll go too. It, it's just unbelievably difficult to follow. So here we are arriving in Kansas City. Let's see if they did inv indeed get on the. Uh, both the passenger for CIC Commons and the passenger for Flamingo Bowl left the station, so one assumes that they have indeed gotten on our MP Sedalia train. Let's switch over to that now to see who's who's going where. Um, the uh, they don't show up individually on the train because that shows their next stop rather than their whole trip. I think. Uh, and so they're presumably amongst the 13 passengers going to Union Station. Let's hit it. This is kind of a fun tour of my little line anyway. You get to see the, uh, the work that I've put into trying to create something that's a little bit like what American passenger railroading might be like if we actually invested in railroads as a government rather than interstate highways and cars. If we invested in public transit, wouldn't that be nice? Take the train, fight global warming, and get some work done while you're riding the train. Enjoy the scenery passing by, see beautiful stations like Independence, see you know, the rolling suburbs of Kansas City. I've taken some, some liberties with this, of course. It made the, um, the track is mostly high-speed rail. I'm using somewhat faster trains than are actually generally available in the United States. Not exclusively. The F40PHs that are running the commuter trains are just standard, bog-standard F40PHs. Um, and this Siemens locomotive is a a, uh, a somewhat improved Siemens locomotive, so it's got a, a higher top speed. This is a little bit difficult on non-electrified lines like this, many many of which are single track and have a lot of grade crossings. Uh, but uh, with proper train control, it's maybe not impossible. That said, this is fairly close to what might be a typical Amtrak consist. You can see the train's getting pretty full. I say that. As supposedly, it's got... I'm not quite sure how the capacity comes at the 480 people. I didn't think there's quite that many cars on this train, but... You know, we got a whole 41 people on board at 7 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> this is not a profit-making activity, but then transportation really doesn't need to be, shouldn't be. It's about giving people access to the world around them. And I think gover government subsidy of transportation is a perfectly 
perfectly good use of our, our tax, tax money. It's another lovely station. I've done a little bit of work trying to make the stations along this particular line. Um, this, is, this is a line I've written myself and I'm particularly fond of. And so I've done a little work to make the stations a little bit more aesthetically, a little bit more like what they actually, how they actually appear. Uh, rather than just the bog standard stations that Mickey Rails gives you out of the box. And this isn't perfect because I initially built it in a, a, a much earlier iteration of NIMBY Rails, which is updated a couple of times. I think we're on version 2.1 now. And one of those updates changed the way the coordinates of tracks and uh, objects were recorded, and so everything kind of got moved around and turned into a giant pile of spaghetti. We know where we're going, so let's turn this off for a little while. <laughs> Move that out of the way. Watch the lovely Siemens locomotive charge through the countryside. As we're now out of getting out into rural Missouri. I know y'all wasn't paying close enough attention, but I believe that was White, Whiteman. It was basically past Whiteman Air Force Base. I mean, a lot of times, I, I, because of the way the game works and the way dispatching works, you have to make double track anything that you're going to signalize. You have to make one one way. You have to make it single direction track. Uh, so you can't simply have somebody. Uh, you know, even if there's nobody, even if there's no reason to take the sighting, the train. Sometimes the train has to go into the siding just because that's the way the signaling is set up. I'm not fond of that. I wish that there was a a better way, you know, to, to make to all of this track ultimately none of this stuff is truly one way. The the line is mostly right hand running, if I recall correctly, but it's not obligatorily so and and uh, the, the it's certainly not right hand running at the sightings if, if there, you don't take the sighting unless unless you're going to actually meet somebody like there was no real reason to go into the sighting the sighting here i mean it have just stayed it would have just stayed on the north track would have been more convenient to the station for the passengers you know, that's, there's, there was no real reason to go into the siding, but that's the way this game works. And imperfect as it is, it's actually pretty good and does a nice job of feeling like railroading, depicting what railroading feels like. It's designed for transit systems and not inner city rail, which is maybe why it has some of the conventions that it does. You have a lot more obligatory one-way tracks on the transit system and a lot fewer on a, 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 a genuine railroad. Yeah, still about 49 people, 48 people. Seems like we're going to have a few dozen people on the train at, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. We're not going to get real real heavy. But this really is a particularly, this is pretty close to a typical consist on that route. In reality, this is this train would be called the the River Runner, uh, and Amtrak does actually operate it, though I've uh, added a few more stops than Amtrak actually makes, put stations in places where Amtrak doesn't have them. The Sedalia, Missouri is a lovely sort of uh, Art Deco station at the uh, state fairgrounds. And now we're actually going to meet somebody. How about that? Looks like we're going to have to sit for a second. There's the westbound. And on we go. Now, even with higher speed trains, this is still a fairly lengthy trip. It works out to, I think it, it usually clocks in at about four hours. Which is a lot better than Amtrak does. Amtrak does it in 
six, I think, more or less. Uh, still not optimal. It's quicker to drive, which hobbles the route considerably. But to move terribly much faster, the uh, railroad would probably have to upgrade the tracks. And Amtrak isn't going to pay for that, and the state of Missouri certainly isn't going to pay for that, seeing, seeing as our legislators seem to be utterly opposed to anything involving public transportation. we got a fairly conservative and rather rotten government, if I do say so myself. I didn't vote for him, by and large. not quite as familiar with this end of the route so I'm not entirely we're somewhere between uh, somewhere between Sedalia and Jefferson City we're still on what's considered the Sedalia sub another meet hey hey I think that might have been the Eagle that might have been the varnish looked a little longer no, uh, the uh, ah, California okay that's a stop I added so we're almost we're getting close to Jefferson City we're not we're not quite there yet but we're at least close uh, California Missouri is a tiny little city outside of outside of Jefferson City it's not no, I think that's a city of a couple of thousand people it's, it's pretty minuscule but uh, immediately west of Jefferson City the sub that we're on right now, the Sedalia sub, will meet the river sub. Each of those is a single track main line, uh, and they will combine into the Jefferson City sub, which is a double track main line running between Jefferson City and St. Louis. So things will be a little bit faster uh, from that point forward because there won't be any there won't be any trouble with meets. On the other hand, we'll probably get slowed down when we hit commuter traffic heading into St. Louis. We'll get hung up behind, you know, at 40 pHs. We should be coming towards the junction here shortly. The uh, river sub will come in from the north. Uh, Sedalia sub is the southern the southern of the two subs. In reality, Missouri Pacific, uh, Union Pacific, there we go, that's the junction. In reality, Union Pacific uses the two subs directionally, which, you know, Amtrak only uses one. Uh, they only use the Sedalia sub, they do not use the river sub. Uh, and, uh, and so that kind of cuts against, and there's the Jefferson City Station, lovely old uh, brick depot. Amtrak doesn't actually use that, they use a a station in the basement of um, oh, a historic building on the landing. It's a pretty building, but the historic Mopac Depot is much prettier, I think. It's more appropriate for a train station anyway. Our next stop will be lovely Herman, Missouri. You know, everyone's favorite Midwestern Oktoberfest. Go and visit the Deutsches Haus Museum and uh, see some German River heritage and drink some beer and maybe some wine and have a good time. 
still have a couple of German restaurants in, in Harmon. Those are getting kind of hard to find in Missouri. Used to be several in St. Louis, but they've all closed. Station-wise, Herman ain't terribly much to look at. There's, um, the historic depot is gone, so it's really just a shelter. Now, there's a spot where you can see that I, I had originally laid those out quite lovely down the middle of that corridor, but the, the last update moved them to uh, where you see them now. And I've shifted them. So there's Herman, which is really nothing much more than a shelter. Continuing on, our next stop will be Washington, Missouri, which does have a lovely historic depot. Beautiful, beautiful historic brick depot. From this point on, the, the trip's actually really quite lovely. Uh, beginning in Herman, you parallel the Missouri River for quite some time, fairly closely, um, past Washington. Yeah, the river's at the moment just out of view up to the north, but it'll be back in view shortly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, now we can have mates and we don't even have to slow down because we got a double track main. It's this stretch of the, the line that gives the Amtrak train its name, River Runner. I, I, at one time, it was called the Missouri Mule. Personally, I liked that better, but... There's Washington. Continuing. And at this point, we'll start to move away from the river a little bit. Head into some hilly country between the uh, between the Missouri and uh, the Merrimack you know, the, uh, train will kind of cut cut between the two watersheds you know, St. Louis is on a peninsula uh, between the, the, the peninsula defined on the east by the Mississippi River to the north by the Missouri River and to the south by the Merrimack and the neck of that peninsula between the Missouri and the Merrimack is actually rather narrow. And there are actually some, there's not only, there are some bridges, obviously, some of those tunnels are actually just the railroad going underneath road bridges. But there are some tunnels on this line as it goes through the hilly country around here. Uh, Pacific Missouri is the, the spot where the, uh, the, the Mopac sub begins to pair, to the Jefferson City sub begins to parallel very closely the, the old Frisco Springfield sub. Uh, at one time, the plan was to make them part of the same railroad, but uh, the Frisco, you know, some kind of an investor dispute led to the, to the, the uh, St. Louis and San Francisco railway becoming a separate entity. But that's why the two trains appear to parallel each other so so very, very closely in this section. Like they had, you know, they just, there's a Hatfield and McCoy looking thing going on. Like, we'll be on this side of the street, you're on that side of the street, you cross the street, we're going to have an argument. It's really quite funny. Now, in reality, the train stops neither in Pacific nor in, in Eureka. But it should. There was one of the acts. That was a legitimate tunnel. There really is a tunnel at that spot. Doesn't stop in Valley Park either. You know, the Valley Park, you know, all three of those stations are fantasies. There had been stations in each at one time. All are long gone, so I just built them as I saw fit. I wanted them for commuter railroading. I made them commuter stations. 
Next stop, Kirkwood. Lovely Kirkwood Station, which is actually a stop on the, uh, the River Runner. Now we'll head towards downtown St. Louis. Let's see if our CIC customer gets off. It pops up at Union Station, which is no longer a railroad station, of course, but, you know, this is my fantasy. I made it one. We're, we're, we, we're back into the railroad business at Union Station. You see we're getting a lot more, as we pass commuter trains, we're seeing a lot more meets. And it's moving a bit more slowly. Here we are coming into, uh, coming towards Grand and heading into the Leeds to Union Station. There we go. Boom. That's the business. Okay, so now let's see if they got off. Do we have a customer for CIC? Yes, we do. Okay, so now we're going to have to figure out when, and then the odds are that pretty good that they'll they'll take a, a Metrolink train because that's a Metrolink stop. So now we got to figure out when that when that customer gets on, leaves, uh, leaves Union Station. So what I'm going to do is park this down here and then turn the train back, turn everything back on. Let's see what CIC comp is. Well, they already got on something. Yes, they did. What did they get on? They probably got on this Metrolink. There we go. Okay, they got on Metrolink. Let's follow them. They're, they're, they're now taking Metrolink to CIC Commons. And I've gotten just a little bit more creative with my Metrolink line than reality is station. I mean, the lines are the same. I laid the Metrolink lines out exactly the same. But I did make a couple of the stations different to, to uh, for slightly different operations. In reality, they use light rail vehicles and not subways, but I couldn't find a light rail rail vehicle skin that I found adequate in there. CIC Commons, and so that is the end of our trip. Thanks for coming along. Looks like it actually works. They really do make multimodal trips.